So the preparation of wheat starch is normally um, a three to one or four to one solution. So four parts of water to one part um, wheat starch. Um, we soak it overnight because that uh, expands the grains and uh, makes a better, much finer, smoother paste. And then we cook it over a relatively high heat, but not to boiling, um, for about 30 minutes. And it goes through two or three different stages. One where it looks quite opaque and quite heavy looking. And then as it gets um, more towards the finished state, it becomes slightly more transparent and slightly slacker. Um, then you let it cool, and then it becomes quite a, a jelly fine. So if you pass that round, because I'll be showing you what the paste looks like or feels like when it's been prepared. Okay, so it's a bit like old blancmange, mm. but it's very tacky. Can you feel mm. how tacky it is? So, first of all, and these are traditional uh, cedar handmade bowls, cedar and horsehair sieves. They come direct from Japan, so they're quite expensive, but if you look after them, they last a lifetime. Um, we also need a, a, a paddle um, to push the adhesive through. It's, it's best to, the Japanese hate if you get paste all over the place, you know. Um, not only is it wasteful, but also it's um, messy and unprofessional. So if you start pulling the starch through, and we sieve it twice, so you need quite a bit of pressure. Are you trying to remove something from it? Or this is just to get the lumps out to begin yeah. with. Yeah. It's the, the beginning of the process of changing and increasing its flexibility. You can see how quite grainy it is and lumpy at this stage. Now this is Shin Shofu, which is um, a Japanese direct from J Japan. So it doesn't have gluten in it. Because it you could use ordinary um, rice or wheat flour. Uh, but that has high levels of gluten which discolours and becomes very brittle. But this is purified form without gluten. Actually, the gluten, the wheat starch paste is actually a byproduct of the food industry because they use a lot of gluten in their food. Um, so they extract that and then this is what's left behind. And the scroll mounters in Japan, I've been using it for two and a half thousand years, so they know what they're talking about. They just scrape it off. I normally push it through twice, but just for quickness. So there's no real waste on there. So although it's slackened off a little bit, it's still um, in a kind of gel form. So we need to mash it. I'm using the shigoki brush, and the, the bowl has to be damp, by the way, and all the brush has to be damp and not wet. So if you push the paste away from it, so, and against the grain of the, the bowl, you're using quite a bit of force. See how I'm holding the brush as well for, for control, which is typical Japanese method. This is only a small amount of paste. This would be enough, most definitely, for quite a large lining, perhaps half the size of this table. Um, particularly if it's like Japanese paper you're laminating. Be careful of the lumps. You need to occasionally take those off. Otherwise, when you start diluting those lumps fall into the solution. You see how it 
It's getting more elastic now. Um, in traditional scroll mounting studios, it's a, typically a 10 year apprenticeship, and for nine and a half years you make paste. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like the Renaissance, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, they take paste very seriously. They also have an age paste, which is called furinori, which uh, has, it's usually aged for about 10 years, um, and it's very much more flexible than the fresh paste. And it has little nematodes added to it, tiny creatures that live, die, appropriate, and form like enzymes within the paste which add to the character. But that's used in one of the layers of lining. And it adds flexibility. It's a weaker paste, but um, and much yellower grey colour, but it's highly prized. The British Museum make it, but um, we don't have the facility really. Will this discolour with age? Yes, any, any polymer, natural polymer, but it's pretty good and compared with, with most things. And without the gluten, of course, it's very good. Is it, um, how, how do they store it then? Do they need to keep it? In an earthenware, in a cool cellar, right. and the coldest day of the year, which I'm not sure how they would, would find that, but certainly on a cold day of the year, they stir it once. Um, and that, it forms a big, kind of horrible, smelly crust on the top. But yes, once a year, they agitate all the little dead bodies in there. And that will keep it going for several years? Or Yes, they'll use it until it's, it's um, you know, exhausted. So. so what sort of quantities are they making? <coughs> Usually. Have you seen them? They're the moments. No. Okay, you probably go on a little bit more. Um, the more you mesh it, the better the pastry. But now if you take some of it, you see how the character is changing. <laughs> the slime. I know it's not. It smells like Japan. No, it smells like Japan to me. Oh. Love it. Secret to a long life. <laughs> so now we start. Just yeah, the stick it. Thank you. Um, we add um, cold water, just a tiny little bit at a time, as if you were making mayonnaise. Um, if you add too much water at the beginning, it falls into lumps. So if you were joining or working with Japanese paper, a thin, cream-like consistency, not Marks and Spencer's thin cream, because that's a bit too thick, but um, Tesco thin cream. Um, single. single cream. Is about the right consistency. But if you're joining European papers together, you need it of a similar thickness that you were working with today. Because you can see how easily things can uh, detach if you don't get a good cover in. Again, just occasionally take the... You can buy this from a chemical company, probably online, um, Sigma Chemicals, carry a purified wheat starch and rice starch. And if you store it in a cool place, um, it will last you for a couple of years. It's 
quite a lengthy process though, a little bit more. You know, you need to soak and cook. Always use fresh paste, um, fresh, although it will keep in the fridge for a little while and it will certainly freeze. But um, for the best flexibility and working properties, um, make it up the day you're going to use it really. Some people store it in that jelly form with water on the top. I don't think that's necessary. I think just in it's water down. Um, you know, if you put a piece of steak in water overnight and it doesn't oxidize it. So I don't think it's necessary. As it gets more liquid, then you can add slightly more water. thickness that you would use with Japanese paper. With Japanese paper. Depends. These new brushes do take a while, a couple of years to settle down. Which is fresh with starch paste. 